Okay. So now we shall apply all that we have studied uh, in almost vague fashion, in a vague manner. Well, uh, we will apply them to specific two cases. One is the projectile motion, another one is the circular motion. So first, the projectile motion. Question is, what is a projectile? You know, if you take the example of a simple cannon, cannon gun placed here and then a shell is fired out of it. In order to fire the shell, obviously every one of us know, knows that it needs to be given certain initial velocity. Let us call this initial velocity u or v naught. V naught vector is the initial velocity vector. And this initial velocity makes a certain angle with the horizontal. That horizontal may be chosen as the x-axis. And the other perpendicular axis, we could call that y-axis. This angle, we could call this theta naught. Naught represents, zero represents the initial time instant t is equal to zero. So, theta naught can be called as the angle of projection, while v naught can be called as the velocity of projection. Velocity of projection, fine. So, once the projectile is launched, say in this case the shell is fired, how is this shell supposed to go? We all know by experience that this shell is going to go much along that path. So, we may have to extend this x axis a bit more like this. All right. Moreover, we will make certain assumptions. The assumptions are these. One is air friction or air drag on the object, maybe in this case the shell or in general a projectile is 0. So, there is no wind, there is no air drag, that means it is absolutely moving much like inside a, in a vacuum chamber, no air friction. Secondly, the acceleration due to gravity is vertically downward and has same magnitude everywhere. That means, if it is 9.8 meter per second squared here, everywhere here, the acceleration due to gravity g is having the same value 9.8 meter per second square. So, these are very, very important assumptions under which we are going to make our analysis. Okay, realistically though, when you, you know, throw a stone or throw a ball or kick a football or send an arrow, all of this will encounter air drag. But to make our whole analysis simpler, we will avoid all these complications and we will make the projectile, in this case the shell from the cannon or a football from the soccer ball's foot, whatever they are, they are all moving in a very idealistic conditions, namely there is no air drag over there. Secondly, there is no change of acceleration due to gravity at any point and at all points acceleration due to gravity vertically downwards. So, this begs a question, uh, will there be acceleration in the vertically downward direction? Yes, and we call this A y and since it is opposite, the acceleration is vertically downward, we call this minus g. Is there an acceleration in the x direction A x? No, because there are no acceleration causing agents in the horizontal direction. If there was, you know, air drag in the opposite direction, then that should have been considered in which, which case there would have been an acceleration in the x direction. Right now, there is no acceleration in the x direction. So, it is quite clear now that when a shell is moving in a path somewhat of this kind, we do not know what that nature of that path is, but in that case, there is acceleration there in the vertically downward direction. There is no acceleration in the horizontal direction. Okay. Now, this initial velocity vector has, is going to have two components. If you reduce this or resolve this into two components, 
one component is along this direction, another component is along this direction. And the horizontal component we call this V O X or V O cos theta O or cos theta naught and the Y component is V O Y or V naught Y is V naught sin theta naught. Now, it is very clear as the projectile is going to climb up along this path, it is going to pass through different points. For example, when it passes through this point or even this point symmetrically the other side or this point, the point at the maximum height. We have already stated in the previous analysis that the direction of the velocity is always along the tangent. So, what is the going to be the direction of the velocity at this point, say point P? At point P, the direction of the velocity is going to be that way. At that point, the velocity is going to have two components. Notice we have, what we have drawn, we have drawn the velocity V at a later time instant. This is at t equals 0, this is after time t. At point, the point P is indicated with the help of two coordinates x and y, while x is the distance to point P along the x axis, y is the distance from the origin along the y axis to point P. Fine. The velocity V is going to have two components as usual, one is along the x axis, another is going to be along the y axis, this is V x and this is V y. At least if you look at the length of the V y vector, this is the initial velocity v naught y, this is v y. So, as it climbs up, the y component of the velocity becomes shorter and shorter and shorter, smaller and smaller, which is quite expected because as this projectile is going to climb up, its y component has to decrease because there is acceleration or rather deceleration in the opposite direction. But when it descends, that means this is O initial point, this is A and this is B, you might call it P and at point Q. The velocity as usual is tangential, but this time the tangent is downward this way. This is the velocity. It is going to have two components just as usual. One is horizontal, another one is vertical. This is V x and this is V y. You can see V y is exactly opposite to what it was at point P. It is natural because from A to B it is in the descent mode. In while it, it is in the descent mode, the y component of the velocity should keep on increasing. Now, obvious question is what is the y component of the velocity at point A? Is there going to be any velocity at all at point A? We have already seen in the previous analysis that at all points of the trajectory, at all points of the path of the particle in a plane, the velocity is always given along the tangent. So, therefore, the velocity here must be horizontal. Yes. Uh, therefore, there is no component in the y direction you see, y component of the velocity is naturally 0 at highest point. So, therefore, we may even write at this point V y equals 0. So, just looking at the path of the shell here or in general path of the projectile, one can easily understand the following. The y component of the velocity keeps decreasing from larger value to intermediate to 0. Thereafter, it increases in the reverse direction. So, it increases in the reverse direction and perhaps at point B, which being symmetrically located uh, about this A, and therefore, at point uh, B, the velocity must be exactly in the opposite sense than what it was at point uh, O. So, this is going to be x component of the velocity and this is going to be y component. So, these components going to be are going to be equal, these components, look one more point that you can easily see, x component of the velocity at all points are going to have the same magnitude. This is acceptable because there is no x component of the acceleration. Acceleration in the x direction is 0, therefore, in the horizontal direction, the projectile is actually moving with constant velocity. In the y direction, it is moving with constant acceleration. In other words, acceleration due to gravity. So, now uh, one point becomes very, very clear. What is that? When a projectile is launched, 
the projectile motion can be thought of as the superposition or a clubbing or the addition of two independent motions. One motion in the x direction alone which is uniform velocity motion, another one motion in the y direction alone which is motion with uniform acceleration. When you club or come um, if superpose these two motions, the resulting motion is nothing but the motion of a projectile. Okay. So, this simple diagram gives us a lot of ideas about how the projectile is actually moving from one point to another. Uh, let us once again focus on this particular point, the highest point. The highest, at the highest point, the x component of the velocity still remains the same. And moreover, I told you, along the x axis there is no acceleration. Therefore, the x component of the velocity, say at point B and say at point A, Q, B, at all points they are same. Meaning, at point A, V x is going to be V naught x. At this point also, it is V naught x, meaning V naught cos theta naught. Similarly, here also V naught x, that is V naught cos theta naught and so on. So, at all points, at all position x and at all times t, the x component of the velocity remains the same. However, y component of the velocity keeps changing and now we will get down to the mathematics of it. We will write it here. Accelerate first, let us find out the initial velocities. Initial velocity, if it is V naught, the components are v naught x which is v naught cos theta naught and y component v naught y v naught sin theta naught. Then acceleration component a x 0, no acceleration in the x direction, a y which is minus g. Then velocity after a time t, after a time t, v is going to have two components, v x is going to be v naught x, that is going to be constant, whereas v y is going to be v naught y plus a y t, where did we get this from? v is equal to u plus a t or v is equal to v naught plus a t, a y we have already chosen it to be minus g, so therefore we can immediately write this as v naught y minus g t or still better v naught y is v naught sin theta naught which we had written here minus g t. So, this is the y component of the velocity. Looking at this equation also you can once again verify that at t increases initially this in the component or this term increases. So, overall term decreases. So, therefore, as it climbs up, as the projectile climbs up, time increases, g t increases, v y decreases. So, larger value to lesser value and to 0. And thereafter, after some time, this term dominates over v naught sin theta naught. This is constant after all. This is variable. When t increases to such a value that this entire term becomes negative. So, v y becomes negative thereafter. From hereafter therefore, t uh, values of t's are such that the y component of the velocity becomes negative and they keep increasing. Okay. So, suppose it takes a time to climb up T A, T A stands for time of ascent, T A stands for time of ascent. Then when uh, T was equal to T A at this point, at this point when T is equal to T A time of ascent, the y component of the velocity becomes 0. So, v y becomes 0, we already know v y equals v o y minus g t. So, substitute everything 0 equals v naught y which is v naught sin theta naught minus g t a. So, in other words g t a equals v naught sin theta naught or t a time of ascent is v naught sin theta naught divided by g. So, this is going to be the time of ascent, but the total time, all the time it takes from the point of projection to the point of landing at point B, this is called the time of flight, the total time it is spent in air is called time of flight. So, the time of flight, if you call that T by symmetry, the time it takes to go up is as much as the time it takes to come down. Now, you can very well see the symmetry here, 
this path is exactly the mirror image of the other. So as much time it should take to go up, as much time it should take to climb down. And therefore, the total time should be equal to T A plus T A or time of ascent plus time of descent. Time of descent is nothing but time of ascent itself, just two times the time of ascent. So, time of flight T becomes 2 V naught sin theta naught divided by G. You can notice that time of flight depends on initial velocity V naught. T is directly proportional to V naught. So, greater the velocity, faster you throw a ball, longer it should take to reach over there. Similarly, time of flight should depend on sine of the projection angle. So, greater the angle you choose, greater time it should take. If you throw it horizontally, theta is equal to 0. If you want to throw it at 45 degree, theta is going to increase, sine theta is going to increase. If you throw it at 80 degrees, theta naught is going to increase still more, sine theta naught is going to increase furthermore time of flight is going to be furthermore. So, the larger the angle theta, larger the sin theta naught value and therefore, larger the time, longer the longer it takes to reach the uh, its target. And finally, for example, you take the same projectile from one planet to another, then the value of g is going to change, then t is inversely proportional to g. So, this is very well acceptable because lesser the gravity, greater the time it takes. For example, if you take the projectile, the shell all the way from earth to the moon, on the moon you have acceleration due to gravity about 6 times less than that on the earth, about 1.6 meter per second square. Therefore, uh, it should take quite a long time for it to reach its target. It will not reach quite, even, you know, early. So, these are the three uh, parameters on which the time of flight depends. Okay. We can go on analyzing the projectile still further now. The velocity v of the projectile depends on x and y parameters also. For example, after it reaches a point p, a distance x along the horizontal direction, the y component, sorry, x component of the velocity still remains the initial x component of the velocity. X component of the velocity is at all points are same. Whereas, y component of the velocity is v y square equals v naught y square plus 2 a y into y or where y is the y displacement or displacement in the y direction, a y is equal to minus g. So, you can write v y square equals v naught square sin square theta naught minus 2 g y. So, this is going to be another useful expression for Notice for a fact that at point A, the projectile will have reached the maximum vertical elevation. The maximum vertical elevation reached by a projectile is called the maximum height h. So, you can easily see from this expression when y becomes h, y becomes h, vertical displacement becomes the maximum height, the y component of the velocity v y becomes 0. So, that you can substitute in this expression. You get 0 square equals v naught square sin square theta naught minus 2 g y is going to be h. Simplify for h the maximum height. This is going to give you v naught square sin square theta naught divided by 2 g. So, this gives the expression for maximum height of the projectile. Yes. Notice just like we had discussed the variation of time of flight with the different parameters, we shall also discuss the variation of the maximum height with different parameters. For example, the maximum height is proportional to square of the initial velocity provided the other components remain the same, theta naught and g remain the same. So, faster you throw it, greater the maximum height reached. So, moreover, if you double the maximum speed, initial projection velocity, you will quadruple the maximum height, meaning initially if uh, for 1 meter per second you had reached the maximum height of 4 meter, for 2 meter per second initial velocity 4 times 4 or 16 meter. So, therefore, the maximum height is proportional to square of the initial velocity of projection or simply velocity of projection. Similarly, h is proportional to sin square theta naught. So, if 
theta increases sin theta increases sin square theta increases maximum height also increases finally h is inversely proportional to g this is again acceptable if you take the entire canon structure from the earth surface to the moon, lunar surface to the moon then g is lesser over there maximum height must be larger finally the most important parameter here is the maximum horizontal distance the projectile travels between the initial point of reflection the point of landing we call this r r for range so how do we find the range very simple you can see horizontally speaking the projectile has traveled with uniform velocity whenever we we have uniform velocity the distance equals speed times time taken how much time did it take to go from o to b it took a time called time of flight which we have mentioned here what was the velocity in the horizontal direction velocity in the horizontal direction we have said it is v not cos theta not so if you multiply the horizontal velocity component times the time it take to go from o to b so this time of flight gives you the range so let's find the range now we will find it here the range of the projectile r is x component of the velocity which is constant times the time of flight v not x is v not cos theta not time is 2 v not sin theta not divided by g you can club this v not into v not v not square 2 v not sin theta not or uh, 2 sorry v 2 sin theta not cos theta not is going to be sin 2 theta not divided by g so finally the range expression becomes v not square sin 2 theta not divided by g look at this e expression for example the range is just like maximum height is proportional to square of the initial velocity if you double the initial velocity or double the velocity projection you are increasing the range by four times so if initially for 10 meter per second it had reached 100 meter then 20 meter per second it has to reach four times that that is 400 meter so just by doubling the velocity you can increase the range by four times or if you triple the initial velocity v not you are going to increase the range by nine times that means for initial 10 meter per second it had reached only 100 meter now it is going to reach 900 meter if you take the initial velocity 330 meter per second so this is the beauty of the expression provided of course sin theta 2 theta not or theta not is constant similarly r is proportional to sin 2 theta not notice as theta not increases meaning if you had initially pointed your you know cannon in this direction theta not is smaller as you increase theta not the range initially should increase because sin theta not initially increases at one point sin theta not is maximum which angle we will find it bit later and then sin theta not keeps decreasing as you increase angle furthermore so therefore when sin theta not is maximum the range is going to be maximum so sin theta not is maximum when sin 2 theta not equals 1 because sin value at the most it can achieve the maximum value equal to 1 so this happens when 2 theta not equals 90 degree or theta not max equals 45 degree so at 45 degree angle if you aim your cannon barrel and then fire from it the range achieved is maximum what is the maximum range when sin theta not is equal to 1 range is maximum so therefore we can obviously see the maximum range takes place when the angle of projection theta not equals theta not max which is 45 degree and the corresponding the maximum range corresponding maximum range you can plug it back here sin theta not is equal to 1 is going to be square of the initial velocity divided by acceleration of the barrel what about for the rest of the angles for the rest of the angles for example from 0 to 45 degree the range keeps increasing from 45 to 90 degree the range one second keeps decreasing whereas when it comes to the maximum height the maximum height continuously keeps increasing as theta not increases similarly the time of flight also keeps increasing continuously with the 
angle theta naught. So, we will uh, express these variations of r, h and t in terms of uh, a number of uh, you know trajectories. Uh, before that one a question worth asking is what is the nature of this path of the projectile? In other words, whether is it a semicircle or is it a parabola, whether it is a hyperbola or is it a straight line, certainly it is not a straight line. So, therefore, if it is a straight line, parabola, hyperbola, circle, each of these must be representable by the help of an equation, an equation which relates y to x. So, let us now find if there is some relationship between y with x. Thank you.